The 4th of July weekend is here. I talk one-on-one -on -one with ABC News 4's traffic safety expert, Trooper Bob Barris, for this edition of Quintin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quintin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Trooper Bob Barris, welcome back to Quintin's Close-Ups. Hey, thank you for having me, buddy. It's, it's nice to be with you here on a Friday morning. Um, people observing uh, Independence Day today, so uh, it's good to be here with you at uh, 9.30. Yes, sir. And what is traffic like right now? <laughs> uh, real, real, you, I'm starting to see a little bit of beach traffic, actually. I just looked at a couple minutes ago at the Isle of Palms, yeah. um, seeing well over 1,000 cars um, headed out to the beach already. Where normally, you would see around 600 or so at this time. So, um, yeah, folks, are it, you know, um, the 4th of July holiday weekend is more of a localized um, travel day for folks. You're, you're not going to see folks, especially not in this, during a pandemic, traveling long distances. Number one, a lot of people are out of work. Yes. Um, number two, gas prices are starting to climb up. And um, folks are, historically, they stay pretty close for Independence Day. They go to the beach, they spend time on boats, um, picnics, family gatherings, that kind of stuff. That's amazing. Thanksgiving is where you see that that. Thanksgiving is obviously the busiest, one of the busiest travel days of the year. That's where you see that those people going 50 miles or more away from their home. Exactly right. And obviously, you're ABC News Force traffic safe safety expert and obviously a former South Carolina Highway Patrolman. And I want to ask you this, because the South Carolina Highway Patrol will have troopers obviously out across the state for this particular holiday weekend. How many troopers are generally out during a the holiday weekend? Well, I mean, you know, normally everybody works the holiday. Um, it's, you know, one of the busiest travel days of the year, the busy ones, you know, you have Memorial Day, a lot of people travel and then um, 4th of July, more localized travel, not, not just like we talked about, not a lot of people going 50 miles or more, but they're still traveling, especially uh, to, to the beaches and the people's houses and they're still on the interstates and secondary roadways. So people have to man that. Um, what, one thing is a concern, especially um, today and this weekend is number one, the heat. You know, you you got people that are going to break down. They're going to need uh, our patrol is going to get calls for service. So those people need to be tended to. Um, so it's important that when you are traveling, make sure you have a fully charged cell phone. Know your surroundings. Know where you at. Know, know the last peg that last exit you passed. Know you know you get in these rural areas, especially you know in Dorchester County, you might be 10, 15 miles before the next exit. So know where you're at in case you are broken down, or if you see somebody that's broken down, you can call to get them help. Another the thing is, um, you know drinking and driving yes. you know you you have these folks out there they're going to celebrate um i know a lot of the big fireworks things are canceled but people are going to they're probably fireworks stands now you know going home getting the hot dogs hamburgers on the grill they're going to shoot some fireworks tonight they're going to they're partaking alcohol mm -hmm. don't put yourself behind the wheel and that's what law enforcement will be out there doing is getting getting these drunk drivers off the roadway but you can help by not getting yourself behind the wheel before you even um Think about driving home. Find out how you're going to get home before, you, uh, before you're sitting there buzzed thinking about how I'm going to get home. All that planning needs to be done ahead. And, you know, people, as you mentioned, are traversing the highways and interstates to go to the coasts or even the mountains or even somebody's house during the holiday weekend. How many travelers are tri typically, typically traversing these highways and interstates on a holiday weekend? You know, honestly, that would be something for AAA to find out um, to tell you or um, – you know, I can post some travel accounts later on today on my, on my account. So if you follow me on social media at Trooper Bob underscore SC, I'll make sure to, um, matter of fact, the first one I'll do is 10, 15 this morning. So, okay. um, I'll, I'll post some, uh, travel accounts that DOT has along some of these roadways. So that's, uh, that's how we can keep track of how many people are traveling, but, uh, AAA usually keeps, um, track of that also. And you just mentioned this, obviously people, a lot of people want to celebrate the holiday out and about. But how exactly should they do it responsibly? Well, not drinking and driving. You know, people always say, well, we need more law enforcement. We need law enforcement. But law enforcement is not going to be at every party. They're not going to be at every picnic. You and your friends are going to be there. And you and your friends can police yourselves and make sure that you don't put somebody behind the wheel. You know, you see people staggering to their car and they're like asking the buddy that's been drinking all day with them. They're like, hey, man, look at me. Do, you, do I look drunk? You know, I'm like, man, you've been drinking with this guy all day, and you're going to ask him if you look drunk? You know, that, those are the, the, if you have to answer yes to that, you not don't put yourself behind the wheel. And not just, we, we also have DUI, but we also have BUI, boating under the influence. You know, these folks are on the water all day, jet skis, on these boats, pack with their buddies all day. Know that you're coming back to the marina, and you're going to have to get in your car and drive home. So 
have a good time. Designate, have a designated driver. You know, when you're on these boats, say, look, I'm going to drive. You guys have a good time. Then tomorrow I'll have a drink and, and, you know, somebody else will drive. So we've got all weekend to get through this. You know, all, all there's plenty of time to drink, but there's, but what we need to take seriously is, is not losing a life on the way home. And, you know, these hospitals, they already have people in there from COVID-19. So they're already, you know, starting to get maxed out and getting a lot more pe- folks in there than they normally would. So let's alleviate any of that congestion in the hospitals. And that's by not getting in accidents, not hurting ourselves, especially, you know, tonight and tomorrow and so forth. Folks will be out here with fireworks, you know, drinking plus fireworks equals somebody losing a hand or going to the hospital or getting hurt. So we, we need to make sure if we're, we're dealing with a, a vehicle, dealing with fireworks, we need to make sure we're sober around that stuff. And you talk about the coronavirus. How will this health outbreak, in, in your mind, make the trooper's job more difficult? Well, you know, you still have people um, traveling through South Carolina. You know, people come through South Carolina from all over the United States to get to Georgia, to get to Florida. And Florida is one of the hot spots, too, along with us. And, um, you know, you get these troopers stopping these cars. They're getting licenses from people from all over the you know, United States and you don't know who's sick and who's not sick. So they, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, they've taken precautions and they've got, you know, hand gels in the car and, and they're wearing their masks and stuff and they're doing everything they can to keeping that sit as far as you can, you know, you're handing out the license through the window. You're trying to keep a six foot rule, but you still got people talking to you because you got the traffic coming by. And so the troopers, it's hard to hear with that lot of traffic noise. So troopers are talking loud and the people are talking loud so you know you might have the exchange of of um you know breaths and so forth so you really got to be careful and the best way you can help is by not getting stopped do the speed limit wear your seat belts um know your surroundings don't have any uh, distracted driving in the vehicle put your cell phones down don't text and drive uh, we had a bad accident yesterday on, on south carolina roadways in orangeburg Oh, yeah. I saw that, uh, you know, five people died when the vehicle right. crossed the median and, and got hit by two tractor trailers. So, um, you know, these things happen, but we can do that by all being better, ca- more cautious drivers. And you talk about seatbelts. They're always impaired with driving violations or drivers not wearing seatbelts. How many violations are typically given out during a holiday weekend? You know, it, it, a, a lot, a lot. I mean, I would tell you why, you know, wearing a seatbelt, people are like, oh, it's only twenty five dollars. Well, man, it's a good chance to go save your life. You know, you get in an accident, you run off the road and hit a tree for whatever reason. You, you swerve to, to miss an animal, let's just say, and, and obviously never run off the road with, um, to avoid an animal. But I'm, I'm giving you an example. You run off the road, you hit a tree, you hit a ditch. Well, the ditch didn't kill you or hitting a tree didn't kill you, but you got ejected out the window because you weren't buckled up. Mm. So that, that's what's going to save your life. Historically, you, you see several hundred people every year. Three, over 300 people last year died not wearing seatbelts. Yeah. You know, and, um, and, and historically, that's what it is. So just think 300 more people plus could be with us today that, that chose not to wear a seatbelt. And you know, it was the safest thing you can do. It's People say, well, you know, what if my car flips over and goes in the water? And the chances of that happening are probably slim to none. Mm. But. If you're up, if you're in the water, you take your seatbelt off just like you normally would, and you get out the car. I would rather have everything inside the vehicle to protect myself than not have it. You know, and some people say, "Well, these newer cars have airbags all over the place." Well, the airbags will keep you from hitting your head into the side of the car or um, hitting your head into the steering wheel. I've seen somebody break their teeth off in the steering wheel because they didn't have a seatbelt. So it'll keep you from hitting it, but it's uh, an airbag will not keep you, in, in, along with the strength of your physical strength will not keep you inside the vehicle. When you, when you hit something, for example, traveling interstate speed, 70 miles an hour, you run off and hit somebody or hit a stop vehicle, whatever's not secure in your car is coming out at that speed. Mm. So that's what you need to realize. And you know, the 100 deadly days of summer are here. When do troopers exactly see a spike in those numbers? Well, again, historically, um, when I was with the patrol, we saw, uh, we saw two spikes, actually. We saw a spike over the summer. That's why they call it 100 deadly days. That's for Memorial Day. It stretches all the way to Labor Day. And why? Well, you got a lot more people out during the summertime. You got more people doing more activities. They're biking. They're walking. They're, they're, um, they're boating. There are more people traveling. You know, wintertime, you're not going to be on your motorcycle in the wintertime. You're, you're not going to be walking 
in the park when it's freezing cold. You know, but summertime brings brings bugs out, brings the birds out, brings everybody out. So you know, you see a lot a lot more going on, and um, around the holidays too, starting from uh, I would say just after Halloween, stretching all the way to New Year's. You know, we 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 would always see um, an increase during that time also, and that's with people traveling. You know, a lot more people. You know, you're not just traveling by yourself to go see your family. You got a whole car full of people. You know, you get in an accident, there's a lot more people getting hurt, and unfortunately, a lot more people getting killed. So we need to do everything as drivers. I would say, drive like you you were driving when you got your driver's test. You use your signals all the time. You you made sure you had enough distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. You didn't speed during your driver's test. You know, you, you weren't on the phone texting when you're getting your driver's test. We we need to make sure we're doing everything we can individually, and if we all do that then, then uh, we could all be have a lot less accidents, a lot less fatalities on the roadways. And I know as a former highway patrolman, you know, obviously you don't want any accidents on bo- on boats and the waters as well. What tips do you have for those boaters? Hey, you just treat it just like a car. You know, you uh, you get a BUI out there, there's a good chance you can go to jail or go to prison for killing somebody on the waterways. You know, um, when I turn my car going around a curve, when I turn it, that's when the car is going to turn. Um, being in the Navy, I can tell you staring these, I was, I, I was staring the USS Mount Baker over to the Persian Gulf during my watch and stuff. And, you know, when you stare a ship and when you turn a wheel on a, a boat, it just doesn't turn that quickly. And, you know, here you are inebriated now. You're wanting to steer away from that sailboat coming. And, and you're distracted. You're, you know, your bearings are off. And now you're, you know, because you're drunk, you're, you're staggering on the boat. And, you know, you got the waves up. And, and rocking your boat so you don't have a clear mental picture of exactly what's going on right at that second and, and normally no one rides by themselves in a the boat they have a pile of people you, you get you get ejected out of a boat you can get hurt leaving the boat and then you're hurt in the water and you can drown so mm. you really need to be careful on these waterways and also believe it or not there's what's called fui flying under the influence so if you if you're taken up and you want to go fly somewhere you know make sure you, you, you're not impaired getting in um getting in that airplane either and, you know, obviously you talked about this just a tad bit earlier, but if I were to get in the jam, who do I, who can I call? Star HP. Star HP um, is for two things here. Number one, Star HP. If you're broken down, you see somebody broken down, let's get them out of hot weather. Um, let's, let's get those vehicles off the roadway so we don't have a secondary collision. Uh, and that's a free call. That call goes right to the Highway Patrol dispatch, and, um, and they'll dispatch a trooper or a law enforcement officer out there to you to help you. Now, what you can do for who can you call? Everybody has a, a couple of good friends. Call them today and say, look, if I really need a ride home tonight, will you come get me? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be responsible, but if I really need a ride, will you come um, pick me up? Ha- plan ahead before you leave your house. You already know where you're going. You already know what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. Have a plan on how you can get home before you get there. ABC News 4 Traffic Tracker, Bob Barris, thank you for your time. And again, welcome back to Quintin's Close-Ups. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. Always a pleasure. Have a safe holiday, uh, 4th of July weekend. Likewise. Thank you. You're welcome.